So hey, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you being with me. Uh, I'm gonna walk through my initial garage setup. Uh, this is the first video of its kind for me. Uh, this is along the spirit, of, along the lines of the spirit of Obsessed Garage and that fantastic channel and all the great work that Matt Mormon does uh, with his garage. You know, listen, I, his is a, is a magnitude of tenfold over mine. I'm just getting mine set up. This is a lifelong dream. And I've been uh, waiting a long time and I, I've done it in stages. I actually did most of my garage preparation. I'm gonna show you guys here in a few minutes um, before I got the car of my dreams that I wanted to put into the garage. So I did everything to get the garage ready to then host the vehicle itself. And I, I really do appreciate and um, endorse the method that I did. You know, I would, some people might get the car first and then slowly build out their dream garage around it. Um, but this was so much better, I gotta be honest, because um, I was a victim of circumstance, number one, I, I wasn't able or in a position to get the car yet anyway. But not to rationalize that, I actually had the time and the ability to kind of framework the ideal garage environment, you know, waiting for the car to come one day, whatever that car was gonna be. I was always in the market for a Porsche 911, and I uh, spent a year or two uh, narrowing down that process to get the car that I wanted, that I could afford, and all the things I wanted, and then put it into the garage. But this was an empty spot for basically almost two years uh, as I did little projects on the garage. So let me walk you guys through uh, some of the things that I did and have yet to do. There's a couple checklist items here that are still on the board. Um, first and foremost is the floor. This is a temporary situation for me. Underneath it's concrete slab, obviously, and I have this Costco product that I got several years ago that's made out of PVC, but it's, it's sort of like a vinyl type feel and with a diamond plate type of uh, texture to it. Um, I gotta be honest, and I'm not here to criticize Costco today, but it was quite expensive and it's turned out to be basically a piece of junk. Um, what you see here is not Costco's fault. I cut that out and I'm not blaming them for that. That's a temporary patch fill for where I ran out of space between the two eight foot rolls. Um, but, but what I'm really disappointed about this floor covering is that it's supposed to be impervious to stains and, and markings and whatnot, and it's anything but. It actually is pervious to all stains and everything like that. Any kind of salt, grime, dirt gets baked into the diamond-plated uh, PVC, never to come out. There's not one cleaning product I could ever find, uh, nor have the patience to use on this much square footage to clean it out. So here's a discolorization example. Um, you can see from where the tires sat over the winter. That's from three winters ago, and it could never come up, and I've hit it with every product in the world. Um, so it's been pretty disappointing. What it is good at, though, is actually if you're not uh, OCD or uh, too into aesthetics, it's a phenomenal cover for your otherwise bare concrete floor. Um, so it does give a little bit more of a professional look. Uh, it does protect the concrete underneath, obviously. It just doesn't look up to snuff for car guys and obsessed garage people. So um, this has always been temporary and it's the number one thing I plan to address in the next year. You know, this video is being shot during the time of the coronavirus, coronavirus crisis. And uh, you know, everything for everybody is up in the air in terms of things you'd spend disposable income on these days. So, you know, I'm, I'm filming this video and sharing with you thoughts that are basically relevant from a month and a half ago as opposed to what's going on in the world right now. So, you know, basically, hopefully we'll be able to jump over this point in time down the line and life will get back to normal, hopefully, and we're able to kind of go out and do the fun things that we used to do. Um, if that ever happens, God willing, I my garage floor is high up on that list, um, if I'm lucky. I'll say that with all perspective. If I'm fortunate and lucky enough to be back in the same position as we were going into this, uh, you know, the garage floor is the next major item and my plan is to do a uh, polyaspartic coating with the flakes that a, several companies do. You've seen them on the internet, YouTube. You can go search it. There's some really nifty products. Very aesthetically pleasing, very professional looking. They're expensive to apply. Um, it, it involves, you know, etching and, not etching, but grinding the concrete down underneath, prepping it. Um, and then putting a flat coat and a base coat and then a uh, polyspartic clear coat over the flakes and letting it cure. Um, so it's an expensive process to be done by professionals, if you ask me. And I plan to have professionals do it, um, just uh, not just yet. But in any case, um, 
that's the one major thing to do. Everything else I pretty much have the way I wanted it, so I'm happy to share. So the first thing I'll just show, since it's in the video right now, is you can see this, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but what this is is a, uh, a foam pad. Let me see if I can get some resolution and hold it for, uh, I apologize, I'm using an iPhone, but that is basic foam. But it's very, it's very well cut, very professionally cut. It's about an inch thick and it surrounds your typical four inch concrete lally column, which I have in this, uh, well, it's concrete inside of steel. So it's a steel wrapped concrete, four inch traditional column that holds up the ceiling. And uh, this I believe is a uh, six foot height pre-cut section that is delivered to you by the company. And uh, I don't have that information right now, but I'll post a video on it at some point. Uh, when it came in the mail, I didn't like it at first, the way it was shipped, but then it seemed to kind of miraculously shape to form, and it's joined together at a seam. You can see the seam right here. Right there is the seam, and I you could use Super 77 3M product spray, which is what the company recommends, but you can also get, go get Monster Tape. I'm not Monster. Gorilla, gorilla Tape. If you get the Gorilla Double Face Tape, it works just as well. This hasn't come apart in over a month, and it is permanently sealed. Uh, in terms of keeping it there, but it's also something you could split open very easily as well if you needed to relocate it. Um, but it's perfectly fitting. This company hit the jackpot in making a solution for banging your doors into your concrete pole because it is absolutely perfect for opening your door even at high speed into the pole. If you punch it with your knuckles, you can go right to the metal and that will hurt. So it won't stop something of significant torque under a small surface area like a fist. But what, what it does do great is a blunt, long object like your door panel, when you swing it open into that, it actually buffers it perfectly. There's a, the, the load of impact is spread across the surface area, so it's a nice soft landing on the pole. It's a wonderful product. Uh, I completely endorse it, and I'll do a separate video on that. But moving along, the next thing I'm really proud of is the lighting system. Um, I did this lighting system before I learned from some other folks on YouTube, like Matt Foreman, Obsessed Garage, giving him a big plug. He's fantastic. He goes to the nth degree with his lighting. He even goes up to 6,500 Kelvin with special bulbs that really pop inside a garage and allow you to do good paint correction and paint analysis and so forth. I I'm not at that level. That's not to say that if I had seen his stuff first before I did this a year or two ago, that I wouldn't have gone the same direction he did with some of the higher color temperatures. But I'm but as a, as a lay person, as an, an amateur, I'm very happy with standard 4,000 Kelvin LED shop lights that I got from Costco and joined them for to clip like you're able to. And then I added some other uh, LED floodlights too to the fixtures. But I got these on both sides of the garage. There's a lot of illumination here. Um, they're LEDs, so they're energy efficient. They don't kill your electric bill. I don't leave them on all the time. For example, if I shut the garage, the main lights off, they go off and I have your two overhead garages. So if the wife, the kids, everybody's coming in here, or you're jumping in to do some recycling or whatever it is, you don't have to throw on the big lights if you don't want to. I have it on a switch for when I'm doing car stuff. And it's really bright in here. And with a white car, it's really good because you kind of really get a sense of how your paint's doing. If you're doing any internal uh, wintertime uh, you know, waxing or ceramic application, or you're doing your windows, with any product, you can see what you're doing in here. If you're working on the car, um, if you're changing the wheels, there's plenty of illumination and it gives a nice professional look to your, to your kind of garage cave, your man cave as it was. Um, I put in the, uh, moving along the list here, I put in these lift masters. A lot of YouTube guys never seem to mention garage door openers. Uh, at least I haven't come across them in the videos about general garage issues, but I think they're critically important. Um, I put these in back in 2018. They were the state of the art at the time. These are probably the best motors you could get on the market anywhere. Um, they've since been surpassed by LiftMaster itself with their newer LED version of the same unit. So it's a, it's a DC uh, belt driven unit, but these are incandescent fixtures that I stuck LED bulbs in. But my understanding is that the newest product LiftMaster makes actually in 2020 now has the LED bulbs built in. Um, so they would be a fantastic choice, but I've been very, very happy with these units. They're ultra silent. Uh, you know what? I'll make one go up. Very, very quiet.
all you hear is a tiny little electrical whine. There's no grinding of gears or AC motor noise or anything like that. And it stops and it's fantastic. Look at that closed. So again, I put these in with the understanding that one day, you know, you may have a high car in here or you may have uh, just, you want the seamless, professional, quiet operation. You know, again, under the uh, assumption that if you're watching a video like this, you're, you're OCD like the rest of us. I mean, another, another big prop to Matt Mormon is that, you know, he's not the only person out there that's obsessive compulsive. Uh, I don't know the, the level that he was at, but I think all of us car guys and garage guys, we got the same disease. <laughs> so, um, you know, a garage door opener that's, that's, that's fleet and professional and quiet and works well, and, and seems very professional shopish is something that we all want. So the LiftMaster, I think this is the 8550, I believe. It's two years old here at this point. I put these in October 2018. But the newer ones are the same horsepower. Uh, they, all they do is basically have the LED lighting built in. But since I have LED lighting already added myself, it wasn't a big deal for me, and I have no regrets, and I have no intentions of upgrading that at this for a long time. These things are fantastic. And as long as they hold up maintenance-wise, I'm happy. Um... I added that light over there on that, on that corner because there was a dark area. If that light wasn't there, the throw from these lights didn't get over there, and I didn't like the appearance of any dark port portions of the garage. That's another OCD thing, um, but that's important to me. It may not be important to you, and, and that's understandable, but if I'm working on this area over here on the car, or if I'm doing any polishing or cleaning or detailing, you, know, you want to have the illumination on that back rear haunch of the car. So uh, same thing with the tires. So it's good to have the uh, illumination everywhere. Um, the flags in my garage, but just a little distraction here, uh, they're gonna go. Uh, I liked them when I first got them. I was happy to have something on the wall. Uh, you know, I have the BMW M stuff too here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go another level up in terms of aesthetics. I'm gonna get some really good framed wall art, uh, something car centric uh, related to racing uh, or the manufacturers I love things like that, and I'll get it professionally framed. I just, I believe in having that sort of quasi-studio look to your garage. Um, that, is per that is totally subjective. Um, you know, I think folks would be happy with a flag. Some folks may be happy with nothing. Some folks want a naked woman on a calendar on their wall. Some folks may want nothing. Uh, it doesn't matter. That's all subjective stuff. For me, I liked a flag for a year or two, but now I'm thinking um, it's a little college wallish, if you know what I mean, and uh, I ain't a college kid anymore. So I'm going to get away from the flags and I'm going to uh, get some more, uh, some more uh, car-related artwork. Uh, but that's personal preference. And it teaches own on that stuff. Um, let's look at this stuff over here that I really love. Um, this is the, the legacy company's uh, hose reels called Flexilla. The brand name is Flexilla that they do business under. Um, this product is incredible. Uh, I, I, I would recommend that anybody anywhere with any type of garage or operation it, that it's not in southern warm climates, that's in any type of four-season environment to have one of these, these products. This is the hose compressor. This thing literally does exactly as they advertise on the website. It stays remarkably pliable. And it's been, review, it's been reviewed ad nauseum on the web, so I'm not going to go too deep into this, but it's essential. This, this device, this air hose has stayed uh, ultra pliable in super cold temperatures. I go out to the driveway when it's 32 degrees out, 25 degrees out, do the air in the tires or in the garage when it's freezing and it stays wiggly free like there's some sort of mysterious heat inside, like it's almost like radioactive. It puts off its own heat, it stays pliable. I'm not saying it's hot to the touch, not like that. It's maybe a bad analogy or I'm not saying it right. It's as if it keeps its own heat because it stays, it stays wiggly even in the super cold temperatures. Um, it's a phenomenal product. Uh, it's really science at its best because you, you, you could just, it doesn't kink, it doesn't harden. Now, not to, I'm going to throw a little shade at, at uh, Flexilla right now because uh, unlike the air compressor hose, which does say, stay remarkably uh, pliable in the cold temperatures, their electric cord does not. It stays pliable, and probably more than other products, but the electrical cord gets a little stiff. Um, stiffer than I expected because I, I got this first and it was magical. Um, this is not as magical. Um, I love it because it's got the, the spring-winded fashion, which, and the springs inside these things are ultra-professional, and they always go back to zero. I've never had an issue with them. I've had both of them for several years, 
right here, and they've been phenomenal. Uh, this thing, again, not as pliable, but pliable more than your other solutions that you have for standalone extension cords, and it retracts. Um, but it gives a nice appearance to the garage. I mounted in with lag bolts, and those go in, I know where the studs are in this wall, and those are, those are three inch lag bolts that are going way into the studs, because they are heavy. And when you pull on them, you're adding extra torque to that, to that mounting point. And so you wanna have at least three inch lag bolts. Um, I think I have some here. Let me get it over here. I left some over. So give you an idea of scale here of my hand. So these go way past the slat wall, through the drywall, and into the stud for at least an inch and a half. And that's what you need to have all that security in the wall as you mount these, because this unit's heavy. And then when you pull on it, again, you want to have it into the stud. But if you do it right, it's phenomenal. I mean, these two things I use every day, and they're great. The compressor, this is, uh, you know, I'm not criticizing Home Depot or Husky, uh, but compared to some of the professional stuff that's on the market, obviously it's Mickey Mouse, but it does the job for me. Um, it didn't come with a Porsche sticker on it. I did that. Um, but it is your classic Home Depot Husky compressor. It's my second one. Uh, the first one lasted about a year and a half, and then it uh, just stopped functioning with the valves. Something went wrong, and I went and got another one. Home Depot is awesome because they just give you new stuff when your old stuff breaks, if you argue the right way. And, uh, you know, when you're only paying $300 or so for a compressor, um, you buy twice, you buy three times. You know, the, uh, the, old, the old adage there, buy cheap, buy twice. But, you know, I'm not going to go get a Jenny Air compressor or Ingersoll and Rand. Um, I don't. I don't use it enough for as many things as, as would justify getting a super expensive unit like that. Um, if I had the disposable income for something like that, I might get it, um, but this has been fine. You know, each unit has lasted. So if this one's been going another year since I had it, I use it for the bicycles, I use it for the cars, I use it for the detailing, blowing. After I dry the car, I, I get all the little water spots out by blowing it across the uh, panel fits, and it's fine. It does what I need gets all the pressure I want, and it fits nicely in that corner. And it sort of kind of fits the whole Porsche motif I'm, I have right now. Um, not totally going for that, but, you know, I'm happy that there's some, you know, the, 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 if you look the inside of a Porsche service center, any Porsche service center in the country, they sort of have a, a universal dealership service bay look, and they all have the black tool chests and the black uh, contrasting tools and so forth. So it kind of gives that, that theme. Um, if, if you're into other cars, you have other brands that you're working with, they may have different color schemes and uh, you may go in a different direction. But for this, I actually, when I first did it, I wasn't in the market for a Porsche. I was looking at a lot of other competitors out there. And then I suddenly became, over time, a Porsche file before I got my Porsche. And so I went in the Porsche direction. But you can customize your tools any way you want, obviously. So there's plenty of stickers on the market you can get from Amazon. You can do some searching and you can put that stuff there. So anyway, the compressor works great. The hose reels work fantastic. Um, I got my flag. I saw my tool chest right here. Another Husky product. I ripped the Husky name off and put the Porsche sign on it. Uh, again, this is not the most professional unit. Uh, you know, for a guy like me, I would prefer smoother operating ball bearing drawers, something on a higher end. Um, you know, I've seen some of the products out there right now, like Sonic. And obviously there's always the, the, the top of the heap with... Um, with Mac Tools or uh, uh, Mac Go or um, Snap-on. But again, I'm not a professional. I'm sort of like a uh, on-the-side weekend warrior. Um, so this was a cost-effective product for me. But if you're, if you're into draw function and extreme durability and you move your tool chest around all over the place or you throw stuff in it because you're busy all the time and you're constantly going out and draws, you may want to get a higher-scale product. But, but this is fine uh, for folks like me. I'm happy with it. Uh, what do we got? What else here? The slat wall itself. Talk a little bit about that. Um, the, sl the slat wall is essential. Um, I, 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 I don't even want to waste time talking about it other than that it speaks for itself. You have these uh, accessories that go right into the wall. They have load bearing capacity. You can store all your stuff. Um, it's just you know this was when I saw this product on the market. I knew I needed to have it. Uh, I had to save a year for it. And I finally got it professionally installed, and I couldn't be happier with it. So that's uh, another essential thing for the garage, and it adds a nice appearance, too. Um, what else here? So, uh, yeah. So the car. I'll tell you a little about the car. 
Um, this is a 2017 uh, 911 base Carrera with PDK. Uh, we have right now the winter wheels that I put on the car. And, uh, you know, it's late March. And we're going to be switching over to the uh, original equipment wheels that came with the summer tires pretty soon. Uh, these I got from Tire Rack. Uh, these are Pirelli Winter Sada Zero Series 2. I think they're on their way out. They've been replaced by Series 3, although Tire Rack didn't have them, the Series 3 or the, the next model after these out at the time I bought them a few weeks ago. So um, it doesn't matter. These tires are phenomenal. You guys don't know me yet, but as I build my channel, I'll talk a lot about driving. I'll talk a lot about my opinions on driving and products and things that help you drive faster, things that help you drive in inclement weather, the whole snow tire phenomenon. I have a lot of opinions and thoughts I will share. I don't want to take over the garage video, though, on this, but um, needless to say, I have a lot of interesting things to comment on when it comes to tires. So uh, very important. Every vehicle I've ever had, no matter if it's a minivan, if it's an SUV, if it's a car, if it's a sports car, if it's winter, I have winter tires on the car. And I'm a, I, I go past philosophy and into metaphysics on how strong I believe that if you're a real car and driving enthusiast, you always need to have the right rubber for conditions on your vehicle. Otherwise, don't talk to me. Um, and please don't leave any comments on that kind of stuff because I don't want to read them. If you're somebody that's not putting winter tires on your car, I'm not the guy and this isn't the channel for you. <laughs> and that's pretty bold for somebody who has no subscribers <laughs> to say as he's looking to build his channel. But listen, you know you're a car guy when you put winter tires on your car and you spend all that money just so you can have that little bit of extra traction, the little bit of extra braking capability to stop your car. And it doesn't matter if it's a 911 or if it's, a, if it's a Honda Odyssey or anything like that. It does not matter. You want to be as safe as possible in the braking, cornering, when it's cold out. It doesn't have to be a snow area. It's just about temperatures. If you're going under 45 degrees consistently in your neighborhood, you need to have snow tires on all the cars that you and your family drive, period. I'm not even going to waste time doing a video on that. Uh, but anyway, back to the car. Uh, it's set up the way I want for wintertime right now. I do have the 20-inch the uh, painted black Carrera uh, S-wheel option on this base Carrera that came with the car, and they have brand new Pirelli P0 tires on them. I can't wait to put them on. Obviously, in this temperature, we're hovering into the 50s during the day, and we're still in the high 30s, low 40s at night. So it's not time yet because those tires are extremely hard in temperatures like that, and it's not the best safe safety wise to have them on and uh we're gonna wait a little bit longer but these these tires are phenomenal and i'll review them in a separate video so i'm gonna wrap it up uh i think i pretty much covered the whole garage i appreciate you guys kind of staring at the video while i'm talking i find that annoying sometimes but i wanted to do a baseline video i'm this is my my channel now it's new i'm learning as i go i've never filmed videos before or, or talked through videos before on this kind of stuff i've seen a lot of others content and i'm really impressed by how they do it and I want to join them, and, and I want it to be a service to you guys as you look for ideas on things that you were thinking about and say, hey, you know, that looks good in Rob's video, uh, but uh, or that looks bad, or I'm glad he showed me that because I don't think that looks cool, or he told me about this product and it's not working right for him and maybe it won't right, work right for me, and so I'll skip it or find something else. Uh, and so that's why we're doing it. I feel like this is a service we do to each other. And uh, I learned a lot about how I set this garage up and things I have in my mind to do in the future based on videos that I watch of all the car guys and the garage guys in the future as well. One other thing to come, by the way, is gonna be a sound system. Right now, I forgot to tell you real quick before I shut down here, I'm running an old uh, Pioneer Elite receiver that was for an old home theater system and I'm powering it through the old Bose Acoustamass system with the old cube speakers that you guys remember. I used to sell at Best Buy back in the day. I got this way back in 2004. I used it inside my home for about 12 or 13 years. And then I moved on to other products for home theater. And so I always stuck it either in the basement or garage and now it's doing duty in the garage. But I, I'm, I'm not a super audiophile, but I do consider myself an audiophile wannabe. <laughs> I say that in quotes. Uh, and this is horrible. Um, the sound out of the system in a garage environment, which is one of the most challenging uh, audio environments there is, whether the doors are open and it goes out to the driveway or whether the doors are closed, the sound is, is disgusting. And it's, it's bothering me so much that coronavirus economy or not, 
I'm gonna figure out an audio solution very, very soon. And I'm onto something and I'll share it with you guys when I do it, but I will be replace, I'll be keeping the receiver, but I will be getting rid of the Acoustamass system and I'll be going with the dedicated left and right set of speakers that I'll put up here and maybe uh, add a subwoofer at some point on the floor. Uh, music for me is very important. If I'm in the garage, I listen to a lot of different stuff, depending on the mood I'm in. Anything from EDM to heavy metal to 80s metal to death metal to country music uh, to classical music. I have a ridiculously bizarre wide range of music tastes that I dip into all the time. Um, I don't go months listening to one thing and then months listening to another thing. It's day to day. I could be in a totally different frame of mind. Same thing for inside the car. Uh, I'll tell you right now that the the Bose audio system that comes in Porsche 911s is a piece of, I'm gonna self-censor myself there. Uh, I couldn't be less happy with the quality of the Bose audio system in the Porsche. Um, most guys wind up getting Porsches and they're so excited like me about the performance of the car and the feel of the car. We're talking about 911s here that we overlook the deficiencies in the sound system and we just write it off as a loss in our heads going, eh, everything else about the car is so fantastic, who cares about the audio system, right? That's kind of how I feel too. I love the car so much. I'm in love with the car. Not, not this car. I'm in love with the 911 platform um, for a lot of reasons. And I want to go off topic here, but back to the radio. I love the car so much. I love 911 so much that I'm willing to forgive Porsche for not figuring out a better audio solution, even if you could pay for an upgrade. Um, and I'm not talking about a Bang & Olufsen or whatever the, the super upgrade was, but just a $1,500 Bose upgrade is embarrassing. I'm just going to call it like it is. I'm sorry. Um, but let's not get off topic. I'm into music. I like to play music whenever I'm in the garage. I'm not playing it now because I didn't want it to drown out my voice and, and distract from this video, but we'll be getting a new audio solution soon. And, uh, I'll share that with y'all and, uh, appreciate your time.